Okay, so are you ready to dive in? We're really going deep on this one. The Future Ahead by Werding Lewis. And I know you've read some excerpts, but yeah. trust me, this is a deep dive for a reason. Right. This is, um, we're talking about a guy who lived through the Sudan Civil War, lost family, saw some really heavy stuff. But, and this is what gets me, he uses that to talk about love. Yeah. It's incredible, isn't it? Yeah. You wouldn't think those two things would go together. But Lewis connects the darkness he's seen with this really hopeful vision of building a peaceful city. Okay. A peaceful city. Yeah. And he means that in two ways. Like, building that peace within ourselves, mm -hmm. but also in the world around us. And he gets really specific about it, too. Well, yeah, he lays out these requirements, almost like he's drafting a constitution for peace or something. He does. And at the core of it is this really powerful belief in shared humanity, equal rights for everyone. He doesn't budge on that. No matter your background, your beliefs, anything. Everyone deserves respect and dignity. And that's where education comes in. Or... Absolutely. He's yeah. all about awareness, about breaking down those walls of prejudice and ignorance. He says that's how we get to a place of real understanding. And then he hits us with these questions about God. Like, whoa, didn't see that coming. Right. It's almost like he's saying, okay, we're talking about peace, about suffering, about building a better world. But what about God's role in all of this? And those aren't easy questions to ask. Yeah. Especially for someone who's seen so much suffering firsthand. Yeah. I mean, when I got to the part where he asks, does God have eyes? I actually stopped and thought about it for a minute. You and me both. But that's Lewis for you. He goes there. He forces us to confront those big, uncomfortable questions about faith and doubt and theodicy. And then just when you think he's done, he gives us these completely different ways of looking at life and death. And creation. Yeah. Like he's almost rewriting the rules of existence. It's classic Lewis. He's like, what if we looked at it this way? And your whole perspective shifts. So like instead of the traditional idea of a god creating the universe, he talks about everything being interconnected and kind of self-made. Exactly. It's all about how these different elements come together and interact. Even death, he says, is just a natural separation of those interconnected parts. So it's like he's trying to find meaning in the chaos, in the suffering he witnessed. Yeah, and he wants us to do the same, to grapple with those big questions and find our own meaning in it all. And you know what makes you wonder, right? Like, maybe that's part of what leads us to love in the first place. That search for meaning, that need to connect with something bigger than ourselves. Mm -hmm. It's definitely there. But then Lewis goes and puts love itself under the microscope, too. Huh? Which, I don't know about you, but oh, yeah. makes me a little nervous. Right, because love is supposed to be this big, mysterious thing. Right. But Lewitz over here with his test tubes and his equations trying to break it down. He's not afraid to go there. <laughs> I mean, this is a guy who calls himself a secret love explorer, remember? That's right. He even uses his own dating life as research. Like that story about the date who complimented his car before she even said hello. I mean, who does that? Oh, I remember that one. It's hilarious but also really insightful yeah. because it got him thinking about what actually makes love last. What are the elements, the ingredients that go into making a relationship work? And that's where he gives us that whole desiring fulfillment and expectation framework, right? Yeah. It sounds a little cold and calculated for something like love, if you ask me. Maybe, but he explains it so well. See, he's not saying that love is just a formula. Yeah, It's more like he's trying to understand the underlying mechanics of it. Like, what makes two people tick? What do they need from each other to feel loved and fulfilled? And most importantly, are those needs being met? Because when they're not, that's when things start to go south. And that's where the right questions come in. Because if we're being honest with ourselves, yeah, yeah. how many of us have asked that dreaded question? How much do you love me? Ugh, it's the worst, isn't it? Like trying to get a straight answer out of a magic eight ball. Exactly. And Lewis would say we're asking the wrong question entirely. He's all about being specific. Asking things like, what do you love most about me? Or how can I be a better partner to you? That's how you get to the heart of what really matters in a relationship. It's about being intentional, about understanding your own needs and expectations and being able to communicate them to your partner. Which honestly is good advice for any relationship, right? Not just romantic ones. Mm. That whole idea of self-awareness and open communication, we could all use a little more of that. And it's that honesty, that willingness to really look at the hard stuff that makes Lewis's writing about the Sudan Civil War so powerful. It's brutal, no question. But he doesn't just show us the battlefield. He takes us into the refugee camps, the shattered communities, the long shadow the war casts on people's lives. He doesn't sugarcoat it at all. He even calls the refugee camps open prisons of death. 
which is a really stark reminder that even when the fighting stops, the suffering continues. Yeah, you've got displacement, poverty, discrimination. It's like this whole other battle that people have to fight just to survive. And often even religion gets caught up in it. Which is heartbreaking, right? Because you'd think faith would be a source of comfort in those situations. You'd hope so. Yeah. But Lewis shows how religion was often used to justify the conflict, the inequality. It deepens the tragedy in a way. And, you know, witnessing that kind of pain, it'd be easy to become cynical, to lose faith in humanity. Right. But that's not Lewis. He doesn't let us off that easy. Nope, not at all. He comes back to this idea of personal responsibility, of using those experiences, even the painful ones, as fuel for growth. And that's where the love ingredients come in, right? Exactly. It's about self-reflection, about asking ourselves what we truly value, what we're willing to fight for in our own lives and in the world. So instead of giving us a set of answers, he's really giving us the tools to find our own. He's saying, look, this is what I've learned from my experiences. Now go out and figure out what love and peace mean to you. It's about taking ownership, about realizing that we all have a part to play in creating a better future. And that's a powerful message no matter where you're coming from. So as we wrap up here, I have to ask, what are your love ingredients? What matters most to you? The future ahead is a challenging read, but it's also incredibly hopeful. And I think Lewis would say that hope starts with each of us, taking responsibility for ourselves, for our choices, and for the world we want to create.